Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Darren. One of the things that flew completely under the radar for me in the past few weeks was this buff to Prey on the Weak for the spec of Assassination. The damage change for the talent now reads that during ACC, like a cheap shot, kidney shot, blind or sap, you now cause the target to take 15% more damage compared to the original 10%. This is a nice change to the ability and certainly buffed it for into a viable position for many players at a higher ladder to actually take. This change also offers assassination even more playstyle options for the future of the game, making assassination even more of a preferred spec to PvP with. In today's video, I want to take a look at this talent in a close detail and answer a few questions. The first one being is, what does this buff do for the talent for the spec of assassination? First things first, it offers assassination more than one role when it comes to PvP. In addition to blind, you now have a good toolkit to offer your team a support style of play. Assassination has been all about dealing damage and stacking cooldowns until you train the enemy into the ground, but this change offers assassination some CC and swapping opportunities that offers it a support playstyle. This offers the team comps a massive burst setup with the rogue as the spearhead for the operation. Because of the dot and the dot based playstyle, all assassination rogues could do is layer the dots and keep stabbing at the enemy until they're dead which made him fairly predictable to play against in Arena's MPGs. But with this change, you can now shadow step Kidney at target, allowing your mage, for example, to set up a juicy glacial spike, while you unleash your artifact weapon during the swap. This allows assassination rogues to be less predictable, letting you get your bearings for the dots up ahead of time, without being a massive tell on who you're going to be hitting during your burst. Flexibility allows you to get many dots on many enemies and make a crucial last second swap to score a kill on an enemy, which opens up a lot more opportunities for a kill for many assassination rogues in battlegrounds and in arenas. But Prey in the Week sits on an interesting talent area where you have to choose between Prey and Eternal Bleeding. So the question is, is there any drawback to Prey in the Week? And there is. The drawbacks of the choosing Prey in the Week is you are sacrificing a lot of your personal damage. So you gotta ask yourself, is Prey in the Week better than Internal Bleeding? And in some cases, Prey in the Week is. Internal does offer you a lot more personal damage, which is great to bring into Battlegrounds and 2v2 arenas. It offers you more reliability on your own damage output, which many players do rely on. In random Battleground games, you can't always rely on someone else to be able to dish out the damage necessary when you open up the opportunity. If you are in a team situation where there is synergy or communication present, then definitely Prey in the Week is the better choice to go because it offers you far more damage boost for the team effort. Basically, in layman's terms, if your team isn't pulling off damage or if you can't trust them to score the kill, then definitely you should go with internal bleeding. You can bring the horse to the water, but you can't force it to drink it. Now let's ask another question. What are some of the other talents that can be used to help for the Prey in the Week build? And I tried a few of them. Let's first talk about the Mark for Death versus Venom Rush. Mark for Death into a Kidney offers you the ability to set up the Kidney whenever you want to instantly, and is the perfect choice for many games that don't last all too long. As a player though, you will be forced to watch out even closer for enemy's trinkets and defenses, because let's say you set up with a Mark for Death Kidney and enemy's trinket and bark skin it, then that's a lot of effort all to waste. But as a viable option for long term games where you know you won't be able to get the setup as early as a Mark for Death Kidney, then Venom Rush ends up being the better option, especially for let's say 2v2 arenas as a DPS healer. But in the end, Mark for Death does come out to be a more powerful option for the instant setup capabilities, as you are trying to hide your intentions and not telegraph everything to your opponent, which Venom Rush kind of telegraphs it all. Next question Exsanguinate or Alacrity? For long-term arena situations, Alacrity ends up being the more helpful option because you do end up using the haste a lot better. But the Exsanguinate option ends up being the better option, especially for short-term games. Exsanguinate is an option since your bleed ticks are buffed during the stun. This offers you to some playstyles for a very bursty opener. Next time you're in a battleground and you see a healer that cannot stun, which are druids and monks are out of the way, then you can set up this amazing stun lock combo, utilizing Sanguinate and Prey in the Weak, where you garrote the enemy into a mutilate, into a cheap shot, into a full 5 comp point rupture, then you use Exsanguinate. This lets your stuns maximize in duration, it forces your bleeds to tick faster during the damage buff, 
And if you're a fan of bursty openers without blowing your load in the first 3 seconds, then this is something fun for you to play around with in arenas and battlegrounds. Now hold on there Dalaran, are you telling me to use Exsanguinate without internal bleeding? Are you kidding me? Well, not really. The bleeding damage during the stun is increased by 15%, so it makes sense to take advantage of the damage boost with Exsanguinate. If you wish, you can combine elaborate planning on top of it all, which tags in 12% more damage on top of the 15% that you're allowing with Prey on the Weak. Prey offers you a flexible option in playstyle, focusing on swaps and massive burst capabilities, team-based build that offers you your opener burst, more control over the damage output, and lets you use some interesting talents in an interesting wombo combo, which is of course great for players who like to use other abilities and talents in new and interesting ways. I think the Prey buff is an awesome buff and I'm glad Blizzard made it stronger in patch 7.1.5. I do hope that the damage increase bleeds for the other specs because I feel like out the rogues could definitely use it. Subtlety is currently dominating with control as is and this buff would make him a little bit too strong in my personal opinion. This change to the talents is a great challenge to the meta of eternal bleeding and allows players to play around with other talents and talent combinations. I think you guys should definitely check out Prayer in the Week and give it a go in a few battle guns and skirmishes, then come back to this video and tell me what you thought about the build and the buff to Prayer in the Week. Thank you guys so much for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.